So I think the Boxmaker gadget from Vectric is an awesome tool. If you have not used it, then it's about time to install it. That's what I will show you today. I have a box right here. I need to make some room in my shop and therefore I need some boxes in a hurry. And I made this one here using the box maker with some finger joints that I really like. Uh, a little difficult to see. But um, yeah, by the end of the video, I'll show you how to install it, how to make the design for a box. And uh, I will also route the whole thing out and then show you the final result. And if you follow my channel, you already know, yes, I will have some tips and tricks for you towards the end. So within the Vectric software, you have a tab up on top called Gadgets, and then Install New Gadget. Here in mine, you already see the box creator, but chances are that you don't have that yet. So let's see that we get yours installed. And the way I do it is I like to go to the Vectric webpage, so just to vectric.com. And next you will see a community tab, so Vectric community right here in the center. And in here you have gadgets almost at the bottom. Okay, on this page here um, you see we have gadgets for drawing, modeling, toolpaths and so on. And one thing I like to point out is that this is now for version 11. I have a version 11.5, so I was able to download this. But if you have a previous version, then down here at the bottom, there's version 8, 9, and 10. So you have to download the gadget that is correct for your version. So while you're here, you might have a look around. You find gadgets for drawing, modeling, toolpaths, and job and file management. So I'm going to click on drawing. Doesn't matter which one you click, they all go to the same place. And here are gadgets for the drawing. The circle resized, uh, I find that actually handy, a handy tool to have. But anyways, let's go on. Um, if you scroll down, you're going to find for the toolpath the box creator. So click the box creator. And here's an overview um, and a short description what it does and how it works. And now on the very top, there is download gadget. So once you download the file, and um, you later on double click on it, actually it should um, install into your Vectric software. Okay, uh, if it doesn't, then you can also go ahead and go back to Vectric. You know, need to know where you have the file, go to Edge Gadgets and install new gadget, and then just point to the, to the directories that you have the download. Okay, that is it for installing it. Also important to know is that this gadget will not work for the desktop version. It will work for Aspire and um, Cut2D and also for VCAF Pro, of course, but it will not work for the desktop version. So I think that's an important tidbit. So now we can go to create a new file. And I like to make a box that is 350 by 350. So my width is going to be 370. I know already I need about 800 millimeter in length and my stock is actually that big. And the stock thickness is 12.2 millimeters. So I am going to zero out on the machine bed, not on the top surface. And I have many reasons that every time I explain them why I do it that way. So today I'm not going to. And the datum point is actually here on the material on the left hand side when I stand in front of it. So I'm going to say, OK, that is it. And next we can go to the gadgets and go and call up the box creator. So this could not be any easier and quicker. I know the width of my box is 350. The depth is 350. I like to make it 100 tall and the joint width. So this you have to play around with of the looks that you try to achieve. So I like to have a finger joint. I tried 25. This was too many of them for my taste. So I put in now 35. The allowance will be how tight the joint is. So with zero, you're going to have an interference joint and it will be uh, really tight. You need a hammer. So 0 0.1. I have a couple of tips to that as well. 0 0.1 millimeter um, yeah, sounds right. I don't need the lid, so I don't have that checked. And here you can select your tool. Now I'm running a compression bit, 1 8 inch diameter. I like the 8 inch bit for half inch material because it will live uh, make it will make such a small dog bone in the corners that it's really hard to detect. The joint type here, it always defaults to dovetails. I like to make just a finger joint, so it's going to be square tabs. 
and the lid type is going to be a flat lid. Well, we don't have a lid, so we don't need it. Now you need to use your center mouse wheel and you have to scroll down. See, there is no bar on the right hand side to move. And if you don't know this, you're stumped for a moment. At least I was center mouse me was center mouse wheel. Scroll down. Just click OK. Ta da. Here it is. Everything is done for us. How cool is that? So in the toolpath, we can have a closer look. Right click, edit. And there's one thing here it does. It will add tabs. And I'm not sure if I like those tabs. They are 35 millimeter and uh, two and a half. That won't work. So I like my tabs to just be five millimeter and maybe 0.2. And I'm going to go into edit tabs. I'm going to need about four to hold a plate. And then um, I'm going to hit delete all tabs. And then I'm going to hit add tabs. So it's going to add my four back in close. OK, so we have the tabs. The next one is I told you I use a compression bit. Here is add ramps and it is checked. I don't want a ramp. And the moment you ramp with a compression bit, it will basically splinter up the top layer of your plywood. I don't want that. So I dis Able it and all I want is to plunge directly down. So next is that I'm going to calculate this. Here's our toolpath. Here one more time in the 2D view. And let's uh, simulate this. There it is. And you can also see the tabs now right here. Now, if you run a compression bit, I like to tell you that if you don't vacuum this out every single time that it goes around, the sawdust actually is going to hold the part in really, really tight. So you can even get away without any tabs at all. Okay, this is it. You made it all the way to the end, so I have three awesome tips for you. And one is that the allowance in the software is really the fit. I think that, that it should have a different word, like tolerance or something like that. Uh, and I made the first box using 0.2 millimeters. That is often what I use for wood. And it was a joint that ended up being way too loose. So the parts would not even lightly uh, engage together and stay together. I like for my parts to hold on their own weight and this was like wiggly around. So I will show you a close up here and you can see the joint. And um, it also is visible. The edges um, are not, uh, there's a little bit of a line on the edge, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, tip number two. What you do want to do is measure the thickness of your wood using a caliper. It is very, very important that you have the thickness of the material correct. And if you make an error, I would like you to make that error on the thicker side of the material, not thinner. So measure it on several spaces and then use the maximum value plus a tiny bit, maybe even 0.1 or 0.05 millimeters or so in the material thickness when you make your job set up. You tell a Vectric how thick your material is. Why is that important? Well, if you make it too skinny or too thin, then you have the tabs right here and they will be too shallow. And that would mean that you have to end up that, you have to end sanding that entire face down. 
and with plywood that doesn't work anyways but it's a lot of work so the better way would be if you have the tab standing tall just a tiny bit and then you can sense that down so in tip number three most likely you're going to end up having some material that is not always in the size of the plate here's 370 by 800 in my case and you want to make all of the parts you're going to have some leftover material so go ahead and right when you make your first box, also make a box where you just have the two sides, where you just have the bottom, and maybe where you have the two faces. That way you can later on just select those files and already make your next box of the material that you have when you don't have the material set up to cut out a whole box at once. So that makes it just easier. And I have yet one other one if you finish it. I'm a big fan of finishing in shellac. So here I just used uh, shellac out of a can. And I think it is uh, awesome for the shop. It feels really good when you touch it and it's alcohol based. It doesn't raise the grain and it also dries really quickly. Okay, so that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like my content, well, leave me a like, would you? Okay, take care. Catch you next time. Bye.